Okay, so this is a video mostly for myself and it's to remind me how I got this uh, texture on this uh, object. Now, this uh, yellow part that you see here is actually a separate um, inlay than the actual ring STL. Um, but we use a process called uh, UV maps uh, and obviously shit. And obviously this is part of uh, Blender. I thought I wasn't recording, but I'm so it's all good. So uh, I'm going to follow this through from the start um, and show you how we do it. So we love start file. I'm going to delete this example cube. I'm going to import uh, an STL file, which in this case is this STL file, and you'll see it. We zoom. It's a very small file. What I don't want to do is resize that because that'd make things crazy. But I won't be able to zoom in on it enough for my liking so um, you'll see as I try to zoom in it's I'm unable to do that so I'm gonna hit N this brings up the properties uh, and then I get the option uh, for clipping here I'm gonna bring that down to 001 and that'll allow, allow me to zoom in fully which is useful um, so the first thing that we're gonna do on this is hit tab it's gonna bring up edit mode we're gonna click shading slash UVs we're gonna do smart UV project now the problem with Blender is it doesn't get everything right. So if we look in here, you'll see that it looks great. It looks about right. We've got one longer than the other, which seems about right because this is a longer surface and we've got these two edge surfaces and these two edges here. However, even if, even if we applied uh, edges, which we do by um, being in edit mode, uh, selecting a surface and then clicking uh, edge and, and going through and doing them all, like so you do start, start here, for example, uh, let me see. Oh, we want a face actually. There we go. If we went there and then we selected all of these edges um, and then hit edges, it still wouldn't work. Um, the actual easiest way to do that is Control E and then Mark Scene. Um, or we can Control F, which I've never done before. Maybe that will solve the problem. That's worth experimenting with it anyway. Um, if we double tap again, select everything by double A. So if that was double tab and then double A. This will give us our uh, mode and we can do stuff like, you know, select it using bounding box, which is B. Um, the interesting thing is what we can do is we if we click uh, keep UV and edit mode in sync, then if I select something in here, I'm able to see where on the UV map it's applying it. So if I select a bunch of top, uh, top faces so uh, I don't know, like well, let's actually select nothing okay so if I select uh, I don't know, this these edges here you can see that they're on that top edge oops and then if we go along to here select them we see that they're on this edge here what we want to do is we want to be in face select mode we want to select uh, let's select some bottom ones so they're all on the bottom now that you can see here, we've instantly run into a problem, which is why you always test your UV maps. You can see here that uh, even though we've selected those three, they're actually on different parts of the object where they should be on one. They sh this should be, in theory, this bottom piece, and that should be the top piece. So Blender's made a mistake on when it's come to do the UV map. Um, so I'm not sure the easiest way to fix that. What I've done, historically speaking, is just edit, is remove a face, because I've only needed to edit the this bottom face, so what I do is I remove all of the top face uh, and then extrude it out and then that gives me a clean UV mesh to work from. I'm not going to do that now because it takes a while. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select everything double A. I'm going to uh, then tell it to uh, export the UV layout and just whack it on the desktop. Uh, UV layout. PNG. Export that out. Bring up my files on the desktop. Open the UV layout in GIMP. Okay, and you'll see we've got these here. Now, instead of bringing any fancy image in, oh, actually we can bring an image in. No, let's not. Uh, all I'm gonna do is just draw a little pattern on there. So uh, this is literally just using a brush. Just drawing a pattern. I'm gonna put a couple of strike throughs just so you can see that it has worked as it should. Strike throughs. So usually you'd like bring an image in and wrap that image around there. Um, oops, and then we go file, save a copy. Um, now I'm actually going to save this. Uh, I'm just going to save this on the desktop just for, for now. You'll be uh, done. 
you're going to have a better naming convention. I'm just quickly rushing through this. So, um, so now that we're at this point, we can go into uh, rendered. And we'll be able to see how the object looks, which is great. Uh, and then we're going to jump off here and go to node editor. We're going to uh, go to the object and just bring this habit. Let's give it a material. Call it inlay material. And we're just going to leave that at that point, and then we're going to go to Cycles Render. Now, Cycles Render gives us the option to uh, edit this material. So if I go to um, Cycles Render, uh, if I click Use Nodes, you'll see there we go. That's what we want. So we're zooming on these so we can see them. We're going to add a texture, and we're going to do an image texture, and we're going to select the image that we did and just bring colour across. Now you can see straight away the marks that we added on. So the next step, now that we've got the um, UV and the image rendered on, we export, if we were exporting to 3JS, we export this uh, file. So I'm going to actually just export this to here, just for the sake of this example, just so that I can show you the actual file and the significant part. So untitled.js, uh, we're going to open that with the text there. And you'll see here, if you scroll down, you've got these UVs. And the UVs are what basically make it work. Uh, UVs and faces. It's mostly the UVs. Um, the UVs is what maps the image to the uh, vertices, I don't know, possibly. Um, and that's obviously important part. And now to, uh, if you wanted to then bring that through into a 3JS object, let's open this. This is an example. Uh, this is a source code for this example. So let's just bring this out a bit so you can see it. So um, basically, we uh, define a, a loader, a JSON loader, which will load the uh, 3JS export from Blender that we exported. Um, and then we specify the material ourselves. And the key line is this in our material, we basically have a map which is UV map, and we do three image utils, load texture, and then we specify the name of the file. So for our example, it'd be uh, uh, UV layout done would go in here. And that bit, our UV would be on there. Now, obviously for me, that was no use because I what I had to then, what I had to do was, if I go back a bunch of times, just get to a point where it's editable. I may have broken Blender looks weird and it's behaving weird okay I think I'll end this video here but that should be enough of a reference for me and for others to uh, to apply a UV map to um, an STL object and then export it to 3JS uh, using Blender cool bye